Shalom, Yashallah. I want to start out by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to you, brothers, to the four corners of the earth, teaching this word in truth and sincerity. And Edomites were not created to be devout men. The Edomite nation were not created to be devout, period. Okay. Now, in this brief lesson, this is what I want to uh, touch on. So we're going to start at Acts 2, verse 5. It says, And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. So now, what you have going on is, the reason why it says you have Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven, because according to the, the curses, we were scattered through the four corners of the earth. So when we came up to keep the feasts, you know, you had different men coming out of different uh, nations that they were under, okay? Through the diaspora. Let's uh, get that real fast to prove that. We're gonna get Deuteronomy 28. Uh, verse 64. And it says, And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So you see, Israel, we were scattered among all the, other, all the nations. Okay? From one end of the earth unto the other. Through the four corners of the earth, Israel were scattered. So when we were coming up to keep the feast days, which uh, the Israelites, they knew they were Israel, they came up to Jerusalem to keep the high holy day. That's why I said they were from uh, under every nation. Okay, let's also get... First Peter 1. No, I just want to, you know, prove it that we were scattered scatter uh, abroad it says uh, first peter 1 verse 1 it says peter an apostle of yahweh shah mashiach to the strangers scattered throughout pontus galatia cappadocia asia and bithynia so these were different israelites scattered in those lands it says elect according to the foreknowledge of the most high the Father through the sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the Most High and Father of our Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us, the Israelites, scattered through in them different lands, that's who he's writing to, have begotten us again. Because we were with the Heavenly Father before uh, he before he uh, cast us off, okay? Or, you know, wasn't dealing with us for a period of time for our, uh, our disobedience and our rebellious and wicked behavior. So it says, have begotten us again. Because remember, we were brought back into, um, we were brought back into the Heavenly Father through the blood of his uh, son, Yahweh Shai. Which redeemed who? The nation of Israel. Okay. He became the ultimate sacrifice for the children of Israel. So it says, Blessed be the God of the Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shai uh, Mashiach, which according to his abundant mercy, have begotten us again. Because he is that uh, mediator to the Heavenly Father. He, he became that, uh, yeah, the mediator, the one in the middle. He have begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Yahweh Shabbat from the dead. See? Uh, one more. Don't uh, deal with the scanner. James 1 verse 1. It says, James, the servant of the Most High, the Lord Yahweh Shabbat to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. You see? So when they came up, when the devout men came up to keep, uh, you know, the feast days, 
that were coming from all the other nations, they were scattered under. See, do you understand now? Now let's go to the, the two definitions. Because I want to make this plain. So now when we read scattered abroad, going to the Greek is diaspora. And it says a scattering, a dispersion of Israelites dispersed among foreign nations. This is what happened. Of the Christians scattered abroad among the Gentiles. And if anything, right, when they say Christians, people say, oh, well, see, we're Christians scattered abroad among the Gentiles. No, okay. The Israelites were scattered abroad among the natural Gentiles. The Israelites, if you want to put it in this perspective, the true Christians would be the Israelites, if anything. We don't call ourselves Christians, but if it, if it was talking to that level, the true Christians would be the Israelites. Okay, because we are the true followers of the Messiah. Now, actually, that Christian was a mocking term because the disciples were first called uh, Christians uh, in Antioch because they were saying, oh, look, they're going to uh, disciples or the apostles. They're, they're followers of the Messiah. So they, you know, deem them as Christians. Okay, they're followers of the anointed one. Okay, that's where Christ goes back to the Greek. It's Christos, means anointed. So they are Christians. They are followers of the anointed ones. Which they were anointed as well. Okay, but the ultimate anointed one was uh, Yahweh Shai, who the world is called Jesus Christ. Okay, so <clears throat> as you can see, you know, this is all leading up to the point. Okay, follow me. Just follow me. Now I'm going to go back to Acts 2, verse 5. Now you can have better understanding of uh, the Jews that was coming from every nation. And why they were coming from every nation? Because they were scattered under them nations. So now let's read two or two again. It says Acts two verse five, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. So now this is the point of this lesson. Now we're gonna go into this word devout, and and as I said in the beginning, Edomites, and it's entirely you want you you so-called white people to defend uh, Salah that descend from Esau, Edom, you have no, there's no devout in your body, period. Okay, now let's go into the word devout so you can get an understanding of this. And in Greek, it goes back to uh, Elubius. It says, taking hold well, carefully and surely, cautiously. Two, it says, reverencing the most high. Pius religious. But let's go back to the point. It says reverencing the Most High. So the, these devout men that were coming from all the different nations, which were Israelites that were scattered abroad, as we uh, uh as I showed and made the point, they were what the they were Israelites uh, reverencing the Most High. Okay, and the only people that rever reverences the true Heavenly Father, the true God of the Bible, the true God uh, of the the creator of the earth or the Israelites because ultimately we have the true living God okay and your other nations got gods gods of idols but we the Israelites um, the one that goes back to see fathers of Abraham Isaac and Jacob the descendants of them we have the true living God and we reverence him we reverence him okay we, we exalt and, and push forth his name. You know, and right now, who who's doing that? The ones that are uh, are being called to do his work, his servants. Ultimately, the ones that endure to the end, his elect. Okay? So, when you see the word devout, the Jews is Israelites coming from all the different nations. That's ones that reverence the Most High. Okay. So let's go. And like I said before, you, you Edomites, you you don't uh, you don't reverence the Heavenly Father. Okay. And when you go into the more more to the definition of reverence, uh, it says a deep res 
uh, definition it says uh, actually it's a deep respect for someone or something. Yep. And uh, rituals show honor, reverence, reverence, high esteem, high regard, great respect. Right. Um, uh, appreciation, admiration. You know, uh, a, a gesture of respect, honor, respect felt or shown, a state of being rever uh, revered, one hell and reverence, and we hold our true power, our true king, uh, which the Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh, and His only begotten Son is Yahweh Shai. We reverence them, we hold them in true respect. You know, we exalt their holy names, but ultimately by doing what? By following His what? His ways. His laws, statutes, and commandments. Okay? That's how you reverence the Most High, by doing what He said. Being obedient. You see? But like I mentioned, uh, uh, we have the true living power. And as we as the Israelites, uh, John 10 and 10, it says, But the Lord is true. Slot, but the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting king. As his wrath of the as his wrath at his wrath, the earth shall tremble. And the nations shall not be able to buy in his indignation, right? In his righteous anger. You see? But like I said before, we had the true living God. Thus, say, thus shall you say unto them, the gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, which is you other nations, idols, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. Okay? And that's what we always, we, 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 uh, we preach that on the highways and byways as well. Uh, all your, uh, your little idols. Buddha uh, temples or statues and all that man it's all you idols that you know other nations all the things that you have the Lord is going to uh, destroy it all okay but you know that's I'm going away from the lesson I want to go back into the point uh, at a lesson I was saying uh, you Edomites were not created to be devout okay you weren't created to reverence the Heavenly Father you were created to be the wicked Okay, doing the wicked and madness that you're doing on the earth, as we see today. Now, uh, I want to establish that you are the wicked, that you are the border of wickedness. Malachi 1 verse 1, it says, The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, said the Lord, yet ye say, Where hast thou loved us? Has not Esau Jacob's brother, said the Lord, yet I love Jacob? And the scriptures from the Old Testament and the New Testament goes back to Heavenly Father loving Jacob, right? Which is, is later, which is named, uh, later got changed to Israel, which he's the progenitor of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, which consists of you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, whose seed goes back to Abraham, uh, Isaac, and Jacob, right? Whose seed lands goes back to them. And also you confusion of faces that are scattered abroad to the four corners of the earth. In Esau Edom, you are the descendants of the so-called uh Esau Edom, you're the so-called white man. Or any of you that descend from Esau. First three says, and I had and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste with dragons in the wilderness. Whereas Edom said, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus said the Lord of hosts. And that took place, okay? We got time where uh, Edom got put down and impoverished in the dark ages, okay? When they had to deal, live in caves and and, and, and be little, act like little cave monkeys that they are, okay? Just check out the Geico commercial. That's them. Or the Flintstones. <laughs> that represents Esau Edom, the so-called white man. But it says, but we'll return and build the desolate places, thus said the Lord of hosts. They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. So, as you can see now, I'm establishing who uh, is the border of wickedness, okay? He is the border of wickedness, 
right? So now the scripture is all about to tie it in and make sense. And actually, you know what? There's another scripture I want to get. Um, it's actually here. Okay. Uh, it's an apocrypha. Um, okay, here we go. First Maccabees, the first chapter. Uh, it says... First Maccabees 1 verse 1, it says, And it happened after Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes, and had reigned in the steed of the first of Greeks, and made many wars, and, and won many strongholds, and slew the kings of the earth, and went through the ends of the earth, and took spoils of many nations, and so much that the earth was quiet before him, whereupon he was exalted, and his heart was lifted up. Um... Uh, we're going to point verse 9, right? So after, you know, we know Alexander the Great was an Edomite, okay? Now listen, after he took rule, what took place. Verse 9, it says, Now I couldn't turn you on verse 4, it says, And he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. And after these things he fell sick and perceived that he should die. Wherefore he called his servants, such as were honorable, and had been brought up with him from his youth and parted his, parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. So Alexander reigned twelve years and then died, and his servants bear rule every one of it in his place. And after his death, they put all they put all they all put crowns upon themselves, and so did their sons after them many years. And evils were multiplied in the earth. Okay, so once you people. You Grecians uh, took rule, right? You Greeks, evils were multiplied on the earth. Why? Because you are the border of wickedness, and you come from the house of Esau. You are descendants from Esau. You're Edomites. Okay. So now let's get the, uh, the main point. To prove you, Esau is not a devout man. He is not a person that reverences the heavenly Father. Psalms 50 verse 16 Neither do you And put this out there Sad note neither, neither do you other nations Okay That's why you other nations Worship your your, your your dumb idols As you do as well Okay But at least Y'all let it be known That y'all worship Y'all dumb idols This devil likes to portray That he uh He's he's this type of Christian And he follows the Bible Okay, he believes in God and all this type of thing, which he's just a deceiver. He's a devil, okay? So-called white man is a devil. That's why we call him a devil, because devil means deceiver. He's a pale-faced, fork-tongued devil. And he's just a, 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 a devil waiting to deceive you, stab you in the back, and, and throw you in a pit. All right, so Psalms 50 and 16, it says, But unto the wicked, the Most High saith, what, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes, and, or that thou should take, it, take my covenant in thy mouth? So what are you doing declaring the Bible? What are you doing preaching the Bible and holding the Bible in your hand? It wasn't given to you. It was only given to who? Israel. Let's prove that real quick. Psalms 147, verse 19. And it says, He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So the Lord is dealing with his people, the Israelites, so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. We were given the law, statutes, and commandments. We were given the judgments, okay? We were given the mysteries, the covenants, the promises, you know, all that. The scriptures. Not two other nations. So what are you doing even holding the Bible, preaching the Bible, speaking of the Bible, when you wasn't even given 
the uh, the the things that are written therein for you or to you. See, y'all don't know these scriptures, man. Y'all can quote them and act like y'all know them, but y'all don't know these scriptures. The judgments wasn't given to you. You know the nations don't even know how to judge righteously. Why? Because y'all don't deal with the scriptures in all truth, honest and sincerity. Okay? But furthermore, the scriptures was never given to you uh, in place for you to take into yourselves. Okay? It was only for the Israelites. Okay, so Psalms 50 and 16, it says, But unto the wicked, the Most High said, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou should take, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction and castest my words behind thee. So here you have here you have the Bible in your hands, right? But y'all really hate instruction and y'all cast his, his words behind thee. See, y'all do this uh for trick for trickery and gain. Because y'all don't follow the, the scriptures. Y'all don't follow the true God of the Bible. Y'all follow your own hearts, your own bellies. And y'all actually follow Satan, man. Okay? Y'all don't follow the God of the Bible. Okay, for instance, let's see uh, thou hatest instruction. Because the Bible is, you know, also a guide uh, to life, if, if you will. And it's, it's all about order and instructions. Also, you know, uh, we have... Prophecy in history, but uh, you know a certain order or law, statutes, and command were given out, which is instruction to life. Because uh, sins are, are wages of death, it says two homosexuals should not be together; they should be put to death. What do you do? You give them rights. You you let them get married. You let them adopt two children. You let them roam around society, uh, being vile and uh, wicked as all hell, and just. And go about and do as they please. But when the Bible says uh, two men should be put to death. Okay. Uh, you have simple things like a dietary law that people should not eat uh, shrimp, crab, lobster, pork. Okay, because they're filthy. They're 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 cleansers. They're uh, they help clean the uh, ecosystem. Okay, they're they're just bad to be put. They're bad to be. Um, they're not animals to consume to put in our bodies. What do you do? You 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 disregard the dietary law and you put it out there on the forefront. Okay, come to Wendy's and come get this bacon hater. Come to Red Lobster. We have a uh, crab legs and we have unlimited crab legs and and uh, shrimp with the little sauce with the little red cocktail sauce. Unlimited and all this madness was well, showing showing you that what thou hate seeing that thou hatest instruction. See? You're not supposed to be splicing genes with animals. Every every beast and every kind is supposed to be of its own. But you want to create your own different species. Same with plants. Same with everything that you do. It says what? Seeing that thou hatest instruction and castest my words behind thee. The words where? The words in the Bible, in the scriptures. Y'all cast them behind y'all. But with y'all forked tongue, what y'all do? Y'all go to the pulpit like Joel Osteen and, you know, you act like you really, uh, you worship the Heavenly Father. But all in all, you were not created to be devout. You were not created to be a devout man. You were not created to be a devout nation. You Edomites were created to be the wicked, okay? A vessel of dishonor. Ones that hate instruction and that casts the words of Heavenly Father behind you. Verse 18, it says, When thou sawest a thief, thou hast contended with him, and thou hast been a partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. That's why I said y'all have a forked tongue. Verse 20 says, Thou sittest and speakest, speak, speakest against thy brother, and thou slanderest thy own mother's son. Because remember, Jacob and Esau are brothers. You know, it's just Jacob was created to be upright and righteous, and Esau was created to be the wicked. You see? One a vessel of honor, Jacob, and another of dishonor, Esau. 
You see, and y'all slanders thy own mother's son because y'all are the accuser of thy brethren. You have the Israelites going off at an alarming rate, but then you go back into the Heavenly Father and say, well, look at your people, Lord. Look look what they're doing. They're eating pork. They're homosexuals. They're, uh, you know, a gang. They're killing each other. They're robbing each other. They're committing adultery. When you are the one on the forefront of the agenda behind it all, you're the one pushing it out to our people. Through the through the through the music industry, through the all the entertainment, the movies, the TV shows, everything, commercials, billboards, uh, social media, just uh, everything that you have going on pushed out of society. You are the one behind it all. You are the one that what in thy tongue frame of deceit. See, you portray to the world like you're this. You're this um, God-fearing uh, white man. You know, that you're God-fearing, that you're in an upright position. But meanwhile, you're the physical counterpart of Satan. You're really the adversary of the Most High. Going back to, as the video, Edomites were not created to be devout. Okay? You were created to be the wicked. Verse 21, it says, These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Though thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself. So because the Heavenly Father didn't make a move on you, you take it in your feet with mine and say, well, look, the Heavenly Father is not doing nothing uh, about us destroying his people. You know, so maybe he's on our side. Maybe he's really with us. Which is truly, surely not the case. Because as you can see, the Heavenly Father is turning this place upside down. And he's tormenting you people uh, through what? Uh... The two prophets, which is the southern kingdom and northern kingdom, and you're again tormented and, and and crushed through the spirit by the word, the true word of Yahweh Shemashah, through his servants, his men, his prophets that he set up on the earth. Because now you are looking at the end of your society, the end of your rulership, the end of your age. Okay? And that's why you see men standing up on all the corners throughout, uh, you know, America. Which is Babylon a great preaching the downfall of this kingdom? Verse twenty one again it says, "These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Though thought it, though thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself, but I will reprove thee, and set them in order before thine eyes." And this is what the heavenly Father is doing right now. He's starting to reprove you, okay. Now consider this, ye that forget the Most High, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. You know, so that's the point, okay? That what? You Edomites, uh, y'all hate his instruction, okay? So how can you be devout? How can you be one that reverence the Heavenly Father? When you hate his instruction, you don't, when you don't take on his ways, okay? You don't push the Bible as the law of the land, you know? You put on the forefront as you do. You got the Bible in your dashboards in your car. You got the Bible on the table when your family walking ready to eat. And they be like, oh, they're called Bible. You, you, you're just a godly, God-fearing person, which is not true. And like I said, the God that you worship, you, you worship Satan. You don't worship the true God of the Bible, okay? We don't worship uh, uh, the true Messiah, Messiah, the only begotten son, which name is Yahweh Shai. You worship Tezre Borgia, okay? White Jesus, the other me, okay? The Jesus but who we not know of. See? Um, Romans 9, verse... I really want to get the point. Um... I'll start at 11. It says, For the children being, no, 10, it says, And not only this, but when Rebekah also conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of the Most High, according to election, might stand, not of works, but him that calleth. You see, this thing is about uh, predestination. You see? 
but 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 these children are not being uh, born right have not done good or evil that the purpose of god according to the election might stand right it was said to her the elder shall serve the younger as it is written jacob have i loved but esau have i hated what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid, you know. Because like you people like always like to say, well, how can God love one people and hate another? It's easy. He's the creator. He does what he wants. But is there unrighteous with him? God forbid. Meaning no. Here, 15, it says, for he, for he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion on. You see, that's plain. It's meaning he'll do what he wants. He do it as he please. So that so then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but it's the most high that shall have mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and thou that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore have he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will hardeneth, and in whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say unto me, Why do of yet he, why do of he fi yet find fault? For who have resisted his will? Nay, but O man, who art thou that replies against the Most High? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Have not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Let's read that again. Verse 21, it says, Have not the powder power over the clay, the same lump to make one vessel unto honor Jacob, the Israelites, which were made to be upright, which were made to be righteous, but ultimately now have got seduced by the way of the wicked, um, and another unto dishonor, which is Esau, Edom. You see? You were made a vessel unto dishonor. A a vessel into a vessel of wickedness, but into Jacob, the vessel into honor was made devout, made to reverence the heavenly Father. Okay, made to worship the heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, to uplift His name, to exalt His name, to praise Him, to be obedient to Him. Verse twenty-two. What if the Most High, willing to show His wrath, to make His power known? Endure which much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. You see? And you Edomites, you so called white people that descend from Esau Edom. You are vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Okay. You are the people who the Lord have indignation forever. <laughs> okay. You know, but the point is that you Edomites, y'all were not created to be devout. You were not created to reverence the Heavenly Father because you don't. Your actions, your works prove it. And Christianity is of Satan, man. Okay? Under the under the banner of Christianity, it's just wickedness. Okay? You know how many people died by the sword in the name of Christianity? Religions, period. Your religions are just wicked, man. Because y'all have this spirit, which is not in the true spirit of the Heavenly Father or His Son, but it's in the spirit of Satan. Because your religion says that you can do what you please. You don't have to reverence the Heavenly Father. You don't have to reverence the Bible. You reverence what you want to do of your own belly and of, of your own mind. Not what the scriptures say. People don't believe in the Bible, man. Okay. And also on another uh, another footnote, I want to add, you know, even though Israel were created to be devout and reverence the Most High, you know, just just you look at the state of our people, and I'll say the, the two thirds. Okay, two thirds of our people now they're not devout no more. They don't reverence the Most High. According to knowledge, but they don't believe in they don't believe in uh, the Bible. They don't believe in the Heavenly Father, man. They believe in themselves. They believe in uh, uh, they believe in Egypt, you know, which is a code name for America, Babylon the Great, you know. But this is what they believe in, you know. Hey, you know, just like this, the, hey, these Christians don't even believe in the Bible, man. 
I'm, I'm talking now. I'm speaking of our people, man. They don't believe in the Bible, and I'm just taking this just from, uh, you know, t a testimonial that I know just by speaking to these people, man. They just, they, they, they go to church just for for the hell of it, man. You know, men go to please their wives, and a, and the women just go to hear good things. You know, so our, our people are full of it, man. You know, but I say this though. Uh, the, the men that's reverencing the Most High, the, the development of our nation that's coming back into the true power and our nationality, which are being raised up, okay, which being watered by the word, you know, which we are the dry bones in Ezekiel 37th chapter, but us being watered by the, watered by the word, okay, we're coming back into, uh, you know, reverencing them, the, the Heavenly Father to the best of our ability, okay, you know, being devout. You see, not like these other people, but you know that's the point. Uh, you know, I don't want to keep going on. Uh, you know, hey, but it's still saying. You know, I hope this lesson was edifying. You saw, you know, you eat my you cannot be devout. You know, and Israelites, we were made upright and we were made to to be devout. We were made to reverence uh, our true power. You know, and to worship Him. Okay, but without further ado, uh, you know. Give all praise, honor, glory to Yah, Bashim Asha, Bashim, Rakakadash, Shalom.